In this video, I would like to talk about selecting the right methodology for a system development project. You may know that there are variations to system development projects. Some of them are more classic, some of them more um, recent methodologies. So I will quickly go through these methodologies and explain each briefly. First thing first, when I say methodology, it's a formalized approach to implement a system development lifecycle. By methodology, we mean a series of steps and actions and some deliverables related to those actions. Various sources exist with regard to choice of methodology. A lot of companies do have methodologies in place that we might need to be aware of. If you have recently joined the organization or if you have been hired, as a consultant, these are important facts that we need to take into account. Besides software vendors, they might be comfortable with a specific methodology and most government agencies do have their own methodology that we need to get information from before we go through the process of selection. But what are these methods? So a lot of methods are very structured compared to unstructured methods. When we say structured, that means we follow each step thoroughly and in detail. And the goal of a structured methodology is to provide a high quality software or system at the end. So waterfall development is what's known. And there are two variations to that, which is parallel development and V model, which I'm going to quickly explain in next few slides. So waterfall development, this is how it looks like. It's very sequential. So planning phase leads to analysis, leads to design, followed by implementation, and the system is being delivered. Every step has to be done thoroughly and in a precise manner in large projects. The outcome of each stage usually has to be approved by a steering committee and they will give us a go decision at the end of each stage. The strengths of waterfall is that system requirements and user requirements are identified long before the constructions begin. So again, the emphasis on, uh, on delivering high quality project and requirements are typically frozen and we cannot really change them because it will mess up with next few phases. So at every stage we freeze the requirements. At the same time, because we have to wait for each stage, it takes a long time for the final product to be developed. And we have to be very patient for that. And also people who are pushing the project, they have to be very patient with regard to the implementation. So there are some variations. Not every company, especially in this dynamic world that we're facing today has the time. So parallel development is where a company would do the planning and the analysis at depth. And once we get to the design stage, we do design in parallel um, steps. So we split the system as much as possible to various projects. And when we do those projects, and finally, we integrate those sub projects in order to have the final product. So as strength is it re reduces the time required for development and time for rework, but at the same time, creating those sub projects and integrating those sub projects are no easy technical task. So it may or may not work depending on the specifics of your project. That follows by a V model, another variation of waterfall, where we do analysis, where we do design and then implementation. But at each stage, we also think about the testing phase. So we start developing plan for testing of the project. Um, the focus of V model is mostly on quality assurance, make sure that we, develop, we deliver a high quality product. And once we get to the testing phase after implementation, we know what we're testing. So simple, straightforward, quality improves, focuses on quality assurance. At the same time, it's very rigid because the more we plan for the outcome, in this case, the testing 
it means that the less we can really change the user requirements or specifics of the um, design system. So it's very difficult again to use in dynamic business environment, which is also a limitation of most waterfall based methods. So there are some responses to this and rapid application development. Those are techniques specifically designed in order to um, cover some of the weaknesses of waterfall methods to speed up the analysis design and implementation phase. Um, so RAD uses things such as case tools, um, JAT sessions, uh, visual programming languages like uh, Visual Basic and code generators, which all speed up uh, um, development of the code. So we partially or fully development the code before we have to wait uh, for all of those phases to go through. So three variations to RAD, iterative development, a series of versions developed quickly and become completed um, through those versions. System prototyping, where we create a prototype and we improve our prototype and throw away pro prototyping, where we design prototype is specifically focusing on um, issues and concerns in the design, but we, in most cases, we let go of that prototype before the final uh, development of the system. All right, so let me go through these. Iterative development, as you might have seen, systems um, are being created very quickly through versions. So we do planning, we do analysis, and then we go ahead by creating a version. And then we receive user feedback, create another version, receive users feedback, create another version, and the final system being created through these versions. So as trends, user get to see the system very quickly and identify the needs through these versions. But um, at the same time, our end users have to be patient because um, usually the first few versions might not be as functional and there might be issues with them, such as bugs and uh, uh, crashes of the system are common in first versions. Another alternative is prototyping, where in prototyping, we collapse analysis, design, and implementation all into one phase, as you guys can see here. And uh, we go through cycles several times to develop our prototype. And um, first we create a rough version and then we try to improve our rough version and receive feedback in each of those phases to get to the system that we want. So the strengths of prototyping is that user get to work with prototype again very quickly. Feedback cycles are short and help us refine our requirements. But at the same time, because of the speed of each stage, we might go through superficial analysis and um, it might lead to some design decisions that are uh, poorly taught because again, the speed of the uh, steps, uh, some of these cycles might be very short, as short as one month. So another very efficient technique is throwaway prototyping. It's, it differs from prototyping so that the analysis phase is not collapsed, but it is developed in full before we go to developing prototyping. And in throwaway prototyping, um, a design prototype is created to enable users to understand the issues under consideration. So any issue that comes up, we try to address that using a design prototype. So design prototype is not a full system. It's not fully functional, but it's more to address issues that we're not sure, the concerns that we have. And the outcome of that will be the full blueprint and Dan can uh, feed our implementation and our system. I mean, it is a, the method calls throwaway prototyping, but in reality, we do keep any learning or any code generated through these prototypes. So we don't really throw away the whole thing more is like uh, design prototypes are really focused and really small. So strengths and weaknesses, as strengths, uncertainty is minimized, important issues are understood. It may take longer than prototyping because again, we let go of our prototype or at least partially. In my experience, this is a very, very efficient technique and it helps resolve a lot of issues that most rapid um, application development methodologies cannot address. And in more recent years, we all have heard of agile development, which is 
uh, works to planning is partially done, then we quickly go ahead with analysis on implementation. Very quick cycles and the technique is more about time boxing. So rather than focusing on designing features, we focus on the amount of time. And then we have cycles um, as short as one week and could be up to four weeks where we try to improve um, the system and develop some features. Let's say if we have two week sprints, if we develop all the features, we might throw in another set of features to go over um, the full two weeks period. So the focus is more on the time rather than the features. So in terms of um, benefits and weaknesses of Agile method, the focus is on fast delivery. So obviously a speed is very important and works very well in projects where we do not know much about the technology at hand or we have undefined or changing requirement, which is very common in a dynamic environment. But agile methodology may not work if the size of the project is very large. In terms of weaknesses, it requires discipline. It requires user involvement, which might be challenging because of the short cycle in agile method. Um, it does have initial high learning curve. And as I mentioned, it works better in a smaller project rather than larger project. Now, the last thing we need to discuss is the selection process. So from all these, which one do we pick? Um, and the answer is, it's different. It depends. It depends on the situation. If we uh, do not have clear user requirements or we are unfamiliar with technology, it appears that more rapid application development methods are more favorable. If the complexity is high, on the other hand, a structured methods might work well at the same time throw away prototyping because it takes care of all those uncertainties and complex issues, it is a good method. In terms of reliability, again, structured methods do good. The model, which focuses on quality assurance, does excellent. Same thing as throw away prototyping. When we have shorter life cycle, rapid application development are more favorable. And when we don't know about the schedule that we have in mind, again, quicker cycles, some, uh, structured methods don't really do good, but uh, unstructured methodologies do better.